Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on algorithms. This course is created by Stanford Crowd Course Initiative. Get excited because there are a lot of interesting bits of knowledge coming your way. In this video, we will cover the essentials of the basic searching algorithms. Algorithmic thinking has two important phases. Before designing the algorithm, we need to analyze the problem that we want to solve and identify the approach we are going to follow to solve it. After designing the algorithm, the solution needs to be analyzed and improved upon if necessary. Searching is a fundamental task that every computer has to perform repeatedly, like searching for a file in a computer. Since searching operation is to be performed very often, it is essential to have efficient searching algorithms to make computers work faster. If your algorithm isn't efficient, it'll take a long time to retrieve your data, especially if you have a huge amount of information. There are a lot of searching algorithms, but in this video, we will only cover two basic and most used searching algorithms, linear search and binary search. Linear search is a very simple searching algorithm. In this type of search, a sequential search is made over all items one by one. Every item is checked, and if a match is found, then that particular item is returned. Otherwise, the search continues till the end of the data collection. Here I have written the pseudocode for a linear search. Value is the item to be searched, for, and A is the data collection of size n. First, we initialize a position variable i equal to 1 and a flag equal to false. Then we iterate over the data and check if the ith element is equal to the value. If yes, we set the flag equal to true and return the location. Otherwise, we increment i by 1. If we reach the end of data and the flag is false, we print a message value not found. The runtime analysis for linear search has three cases. Big O1, constant time, is the best case when the item to be searched is the first element in the data collection. Assuming the size of data collection is n, big O n, or linear time, is the worst case when the item is not found in data collection. Finally, the average running time for linear search is big O n which is linear. Now the question arises, can we do better? It depends on the properties of data collection. One such case is binary search. Binary search only works on sorted data. In binary search, we compare the middle element of the array with the value. If the value matches the middle element, its position in the array is returned. If the value is less or more than the middle element, the search continues in the lower or upper half of the array, respectively, with a new middle element, eliminating the other half from consideration. This process continues on subarrays as well until the size of the subarray reduces to one. Here I have written the pseudocode for the iterative version of binary search. Value is the item to be searched for, and A is the data collection of size n. First, we initialize lower limit low equal to 1 and upper limit up equal to n and a flag equal to false. Then we iterate over the data while the flag is false and lower limit is less than upper limit. We check if the middle element is equal to the value. If yes, we set the flag equal to true and return the location. Otherwise, we iterate over the lower or upper half, depending on the value. Here I have written the pseudocode for the recursive version of binary search. Recursive functions are functions that call itself repeatedly on reduced problem size. Value is the item to be searched for, and A is the data collection of size n. First, we initialize lower limit low equal to 1 
upper limit up equal to n, and start the binary search. Then we recurse over the data while the lower limit is not greater than the upper limit. We check if the middle element is equal to the value. If yes, we return the location. Otherwise, we recurse over lower or upper half, depending on the value. The runtime analysis for binary search has three cases. Big O1, that is constant time, best case, when the item to be searched is the middle element of the data collection. Big O log n, that is logarithmic time, is the worst case when the item is not found in the data collection. The average running time for binary search is big O log n, that is logarithmic. In this example, it is shown how binary search performs better than linear search. Assuming if we have a phone book of 1,000 pages and we were to use linear search for searching for a person named Fu, we are kind of flipping the pages one by one from A to F until we find it, probably after 200 to 400 flips of the page. Now, let us say if we used a binary search, we'll go straight to the middle of the book, the 500th page, and throw away the second half. If we continue this process, we'll take less than 10 flips. Now, assuming we were to double the size of the phone book from 1,000 pages to 2,000, how many more times more do you need to flip the pages in order to find foo? Well, it's just one page if we were one flip if we were to use binary search rather than an additional 400 to 500 page flips if we were to use a linear search. It is evident from the graph that logarithmic time algorithms perform better than linear time algorithms for large n. But this performance advantage comes at a price that is in this case, input data must be sorted. Thank you for watching the Stanford Crowd Course video on basic searching algorithms.